Hi. Welcome to Pico Playtime, the video series where I usually um, do play let's play reviews of other people's games. But today I'm going to kind of do a speed run of my own game. Um, yeah. So this is going to be a little bit of navel gazing. I'm going to try and play through one of my own games, see if I can beat my own game. Um, the game I'm going to have a go at is Clever Pixel. And I made it for Low Res Jam, which I have mentioned in a previous video. And I'm probably going to be doing some more um, videos on other games from Low Res Jam. Don't worry, I'm not going to do a review of my own game where I say that it's probably the best game that's ever been made by anyone ever. Um, but instead, I'm going to play through it. And because this is Pico Playtime... Today's stream or video is brought to us unofficially and pointlessly by Monster Energy Drink, everyone. Yep, yeah, it's one of the big boys now. Um, this is Monster Energy Ultraviolet. Um, it's got zero sugar and L-carnitine and taurine. L-carnitine. Wow. I wonder what that does. Okay, well, let's find out what uh, monsters say about ultraviolet. Welcome to the 70s. Okay, interesting start there. A hazy purple funk, all dressed up in a kaleidoscope of bell bottoms, bandanas, and tie dye. A time when psychedelic, glam, and heavy metal, representing Slayer today, uh, rocked, sorry, heavy metal rock. Blasted from mega speakers at fairgrounds, stadiums and garages. So this is the 70s everyone. It was just one long kind of music video. Can you dig it? Yes, we can. Then take a good long pull. Oh my god. Of Monster Ultraviolet. Is this like... Do you smoke this? Um, okay. Take a good long pull of Monster Ultraviolet. Crisp and refreshing. They always say it's crisp and refreshing. That's usually the way you describe like a bitter or something. Um, with a sweet and tart pixie dust flavoured flavour powered by powered with our monster energy blend. Hop on this magic carpet for the ride. Unleash the ultra beast. There you go. Ultraviolet everyone. Um, if you're wondering what the little funny noise is Betty has spotted something outside and she wants to to eat it or to attack it. You've seen a fly, Betty. She really likes eating flies. Betty's a cat if you weren't sure. I don't want to move the camera because if I do move it, it won't go back into position. So you just have to imagine that over here is a cat. Right, anyway, that's enough of my pointless talking. Let's play Clever Pixel. <laughs> So, I made this for low res jam, the main requirement of low res jam being it needs to be low resolution, specifically 64 by 64 and I realise I'm going to have to put the headphones on aren't I? Otherwise, the sound will be crap. Okay, so in clever pixel you are a pixel which pixel you might ask well as soon as you start moving it becomes very apparent which pixel you are you need to move around and the object of the game is to collect things and attack things and find things it's kind of a metroidvania kind of a dungeon crawler um, anyway to get off this first level we need to get the red pixel I do worry how many people never made it past this first screen who knows there we go, we've just picked up an upgrade. So we've got various things we can upgrade, but the correct thing to upgrade is speed. Did I say this was a speed run? Should probably speed up, shouldn't I? Um, we'll do hard because it's a speed run and you're only supposed to do hard for speed runs. Am I right? So we need to collect 99 red pixels. Oh, and we're going to need to upgrade our speed a little bit as well. Find the mega key hidden in the tower. So we've got to find the tower and in there we've got to find the mega key. Dig. 
One of the things I wanted to do in this game was have a kind of inline tutorial. So the game tells you what to do as you're about to do it, which is the way that lots of games have tutorials nowadays. It's not something I've ever bothered with. But because the game, I felt like the game was quite different um, to other games I made and quite kind of unique maybe, I thought better put some tutorials in otherwise people are going to be saying, don't know what to do. Can't be bothered to figure out this game, it's too hard. That's why I imagine people don't like my game sound like. Um, yeah, that's just my bias. So, as we go through the game, the graphics get a little bit more kind of um, interesting. Now you see, we've maxed out speed now, so let's start pumping into, I don't know, armor or armor. <laughs> Yeah, the more you explore, the more um, the more things you find. <laughs> that was that was insightful, wasn't it? No, I was gonna say the um, the more you explore, the more the graphics kind of become more complicated. Now I'm playing this game on a controller. Now I've not played the game on a controller yet, so this is um, this is a learning experience for me. I'm not sure how well the game works with a controller. That was quite tricky to control. Um, I tend to program most of my games so that they, oh, I tend to program them so that they work with a keyboard. Just because when I'm programming a game on Pico 8, the keyboard's in front of me. So yeah, I probably optimize my game's controls for keyboard. So yeah, this is probably suboptimal, but it works reasonably well. So. The area that I'm in now is a kind of, I won't call it a secret area as such, but um, it's an area that you don't have to go to. There isn't really any secret areas. Um, what classes is a secret area? I don't know. You have to do a little bit of work to get here, I suppose. Does that make it a secret area? So if I hold um, the direction keys, I can move quickly. If I need to move precisely for some reason, I can tap the movement keys and it will give me one pixel movement. Which is a way that you find you have to move as you get further into the game. When the control becomes oh more oh important. So the yellow pixels, probably a bit of a subtle thing here. I didn't really explain it in the game. I couldn't really find a good place to explain it. Besides telling the player to collect them, the yellow pixels kind of work like your health in the game. If you um, get hit, your pixel gets destroyed. So having more pixels means there's more things of you to destroy. So it's kind of like hit points, kind of. But the more you have, the bigger and bulkier your um, character is and the harder it is to move around. There's an enemy, that's a chip bug, so called because it looks kind of like a microchip. When I was designing the game, I had a kind of idea to have the game be set inside a computer. So I was going to have level names named after parts of computers like Northbridge, things like that. I didn't end up doing that in the end, but the chip bug characters. They're a kind of holdover from that. All the other characters in the game aren't really computer themed. The computer theme is something that I like the idea of. I might come back to it. But um, not for this game, unfortunately. So, I'm nearly out of the um, training area. This is kind of the training area. Or the first part of the game, at least. You might have noticed that I took a brief foray into um, the foundry and here I am in the server core. Actually, I suppose that's a kind of remnant of the computer um, kind of theme which I was using at one point. I had a lot of... now this is the fun bit. Blue pixels can shoot. I had a lot of fun composing the game, the music for the game. Composing music for games is always fun, it's always something I enjoy. Um, it's usually something that comes later into the game kind of development. Once you've got like most of the mechanics present in the game and you're happy with them, 
Um, yeah, music, I won't say it's an afterthought, but when you're concerned with just getting a basic game to work, you're not always too worried about um, too worried about putting music in and sound effects. Now it's kind of frustrating actually. A lot of um, game jams submissions for the game jam made a meal that. A lot of the other games for the game jam didn't have much or anything in the way of sound effects or music, which I always think is a bit of a shame because. Putting sound effects into your game, especially in Pico 8, isn't overly difficult. It's a very quick process of composing um, sound effects and music, and it adds so much to the game. Adds a lot of personality, and as we all know from Pulp Fiction, personality goes a long way. So yeah, that's the kind of last tutorial part of the game where it teaches how to use pixels, blue pixels. So now we are on the hunt for pixels. Quite a long opening area, I mean, I did go to the extra kind of areas of the game but you can see I picked up nearly half the pixels I need for the game before I got out of the first area. If you're wondering what I was doing there, well, picking up all these pixels actually slows you down. So, if I get rid of these pixels, I'll move faster. So, here we are. This is the slip gate. And this is like a little nod to Quake 1, one of my um, favourite games. So this tells us what we need to get. We need 50 red pixels and we need the mega key so that we can go through these doors to the exit. So laboratories, um, I'll probably come there last actually because I don't want to um, activate the boss. The boss is very difficult, I have yet to beat it legitimately. Um, so yeah, we're going to try and avoid doing that. The main kind of mechanic in the game, or one of the main mechanics, is the way that the, the um, doors are unlocked. Doors are kind of unlocked um, from top to bottom by the red pixels, so you, you can kind of work out where the next door is going to unlock. So you might not realise this is an area we've been to before. We visited this near the start. Now we're back with an extra door unlocked. Now, you may have noticed a little trick that I did then. We can, if we are quick, cross over lava, which would otherwise, well, it, it does kill us. But if we have enough pixels, we can um, very quickly move over it to get to inaccessible areas, which is one of the kind of secrets of the game. Tell you what, I'm gonna take a break, because this is supposed to be a speed run, even though I'm taking a lot of time to explain things, and not really thinking about playing optimally. But there we go, whatever. Anyway, let's crack open some energy. Monster Energy Ultraviolet. Let's see if it tastes like the 70s. Mm. Mm. It's got an interesting taste. That is genuinely a nice drink. Sure, much caffeine's in it, but who cares? So, I'm trying to very carefully kind of build up a kind of little pixel ball here that will um, let me proceed. Oh, great, I'm going to lose it. I think probably the hardest part of making this game was the level design. Getting the level design right was quite tricky. Don't think it's necessarily something I've succeeded at. I think I probably put too many of the um, narrow lava walkways in this area. Might be something I um, tweak if I do more updates to the game, which I may. Level design is nice and easy to update, so that's that's likely that I'll fix that. So. You see I'm picking up pixels here, 
Oh, I just lost a load there. Oh, well. Yeah, you see, I think I put too many narrow walkways here. It kind of disincentivizes you from um, picking up more pixels, I think. Which is not really what I wanted to do. There will be something to shoot around here, I'm sure, so we'll keep on to hold of the pixels for now. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, I think level design is something I could probably do with looking at a little bit more. Um, I had to do more level design in this than I've had to do in any of my previous Pico 8 games because... Oh, looks like I'm near the max for... Pixels. Let's see, do you think I can get across there? No. Try and get those pixels if I can. If there's any um, Nine Inch Nails fans watching, um, you may recognise this music. It is Help Me I'm In Hell from, from Broken. Right, I feel like this will be enough to get us across that lava. I haven't actually tried doing that before, so this will be a new experience. Hey, I did it. Oh. oh, oh dear, we have a little bit of an error there, glitch. Oops, oh well. Yeah, um, the way that the screen transitions work, um, depending on where the edge of your character is, sometimes we can have little glitches like that, unfortunately. Anyway, let's um, proceed. So these monsters are kind of the lava monsters. These are basically the moving lava based versions of those grey monsters that were fighting, that were shooting at me before. This um, lava level was probably, I think it was like the first kind of major area that I kind of designed outside of that initial kind of tutorial area which I spent most of my time kind of programming or testing the game at. Um, the other levels were added to the game much quicker, much later. Um, so I think this area is probably the part of the game with the most maybe kind of errors and kind of glitches and things. So maybe it's something I need to have a close look at. Anyway, I think we've got all the keys we need from here now. So we'll head back to our central hub area. Yep, 72 out of 99 pixels, so we're doing well. And whilst we're digging, I'm going to take an opportunity to have some more of this delightful energy drink. So, the area we're going to now kind of splits into two other areas. I think there's like six levels in the game, or six kind of areas, so these two, uh, one of them's probably one of the larger areas and the other one is probably one of the smaller areas. I'm going to go to the smaller area. Um, a kind of problem I had developing the game, problem I haven't really solved, is how to get rid of blue pixels and yellow pixels. You often have to drop yellow pixels to um, fit through tight gaps like this. I don't think I necessarily found a good way of doing that. <sighs> I'm going to try putting all my points now into... Um... <laughs> you know I said I wasn't going to beat the boss. Well maybe it's time I beat the boss in my own game. Let's see if we can take him on. So yeah, this area... See again, I think I've probably made this area a bit too tight. This area is supposed to be a bit kind of messed up. Um, I think it's called the excavation or the dig or something. I can't remember what I called it. Yeah, it's meant to be a bit kind of run down, a bit glitchy. Hence, all the scattered tiles everywhere. 
I suppose another thing, you might notice the um, kind of green pattern, green tile patterns. That's meant to be kind of like a, um, kind of like circuit board. So yeah, I suppose there is quite a few bits of the computer theme left in the game. Probably more than I originally thought, which is nice. So I think we've got all of the um, red keys in this area. I think. You might often see me um, just moving around with four pixels like this. This is um, this seems to be like the best way to do it. Most of the gaps in the game allow that much space. Now this area is the kind of more action oriented area. There's lots of combat in this area. So you'll see me doing lots of shooting. All right, I wanted to kind of balance out the different parts of the game. So for people like shooting things, there is this area because most of the game is kind of puzzly, kind of puzzle based. And as you can see, I'm trying to get a nice neat arrangement of pixels Let's me fit through gaps. So let's have a look. I believe we have got yes, we've got some a ghost here to fight. Now because I'm quite highly upgraded, the uh, boss, the the ghost, sorry, isn't put, giving much resistance. They're a lot harder if you haven't got upgraded like I have because they can basically just follow you anywhere on the screen at least so probably don't want to go any bigger than this because I probably will have a lot of trouble fitting through gaps but it does mean I've got a lot of firepower and can take quite a bit of damage as you can see you are the weapon I um, didn't really use any of the themes from the game jam so as a kind of concession, I put um, I put just the text for the for the um, themes as kind of little Easter eggs for people to find. The way the combat works, um, blue pixels let you shoot. Yellow pixels are kind of like we said, a bit like hit points. If you lose all your yellow pixels, it's you'll get respawned. So um, you can't just have blue pixels alone. Here's another little easter egg, that is a Sator square. Thought I'd put that in there just as a little interesting thing. And, interesting little easter egg here. Not about the game, but the um, film Tenet by Christopher Nolan. Well, one of the characters in that is called Sator. And the old film is about palindromes and things. And the Sator square is a good example of a, a palindrome. I think that's something, do you think Christopher Nolan's been on the Wikipedia page? The same Wikipedia pages that I've been on? Quite possibly. Right, that's enough of this area. We need to get rid of some of these pixels now so we can go back. Yeah, the excavation, that's what I called it. That was probably a nod to another one of my favourite games, Panzer Dragoon Saga. The first part of that game is called The Excavation. So. How many pixels do we have now? I think we're near near the limit, aren't we? Yeah, so very close to the end. Which is good because we're going to go into the end area now. So at this stage in the game um, we are thinking about how we're going to defeat the boss, seeing as that's something I've decided I'm going to try and do. <laughs> um, we need lots of damage. Armour isn't so important. Armour is more important for crossing lava, really. It will help against the boss, but um, it's not the most important thing. And I'm a bit concerned, I've only got 7 damage and the boss has got a lot, a lot of hit points. 
um, the boss has 32,000 hit points. At one point, I was going to have the boss be just completely invincible, but I thought, someone's going to try and defeat that boss. I can't have the boss be invincible, can I really? I believe we might. Have we got... Yes, we have enough pixels, so now... Oh, just died. Now, it's time to go and take on that boss. We need to get the mega key from him first, and then we can hopefully defeat him and then exit the game. Again, another nod to Panzer Dragoon Saga I named the last level the tower. The tower being the last level of Panzer Dragoon Saga. And I'm going to take you to see a little easter egg. Oh look, it's the shifty engineer and a mysterious cheat code. So here's the end boss. He's a big boy. Mega face. And there is the mega key, guarded by mega face. As soon as I pick that key up, he's going to be after me. So, the um, end boss cries and vomits everywhere. It's not really there. The key thing about the boss is that he can follow us across screens. This is probably what makes him quite dangerous. Especially if you um, activate him a little bit prematurely, perhaps. The tears don't hurt you, but they do block movement. So, a combination of that and the vomit can make them quite tricky. Now, we are going to have to wait for our boss friend to make his way over here. Now, that gives us a little bit of time to get prepared. So, I'm going to try and pick up some... Here we go. Try and pick up some um, yellow pixels, give myself a bit of hit points. A bit more hit points and then we need to be using some blue pixels. Now, I think this is the only area around here where we can get a good supply of blue pixels. You'd see there, oh, we are in danger of being caught by the boss. The um, stream of tears can block you quite easily if you've um, got a lot of pixels like I have. So, not too worried now about those red pixels, I need to get blue ones. I was hoping to get more than just this, but needs must and all that. So like I said, the boss is very tough. Really, the best, and you can see, he can do a lot of damage to us by touching us. I really do want to try and beat the bosses. I've never actually managed to beat it legitimately. To prove it's possible. What I'm going to try and do is lure him, lure the boss down to the, um, what are you called? the server core area where I was before. There are a lot of blue pixels down there. Make it a bit easier to fight him, hopefully. You can see he's um, moving fairly slowly. We haven't really done a lot of damage to him yet, so let's keep moving. At this point, I could just go to the exit, but like I say, I want to beat this boss. We're 100% in it, kind of. There's um, a lot more than 100 or 99 red pixels in the game, so... Um, yeah, a true 100% run. I don't know how many... I, I, I generally don't know how many red pixels there are in the game. Can't say for sure. So I'm just waiting for the boss to get down here. He will be moving, but he is very slow. Could probably speed him up a little bit, maybe. But then again, I do feel like the boss could be quite hard if you're not prepared for him. Obviously, I am very prepared for him because I know exactly what I need to do.
the uh, worrying thing about this game is that you do get some rather rather awkward shapes if you're not careful about how you pick things up. So yeah, my, my basic plan now is to just pound away at the boss. Have I got any upgrades to spend? No. You can see he takes quite a lot of damage. It's quite a tough old boss. Yeah, don't worry, I'm not harbouring far-right sympathies. The shapes that you get in this are purely a coincidence. As you can see, each blue pixel has 10 shots that it can fire, so we need to keep kind of refreshing our um, our supplies of blue pixels. And if we run out of blue pixels, we just need to run away. done any damage to him yet. There is a bit of a slowdown issue in the game which you do notice once you've started to have quite a few pixels on the screen and once the boss has been vomiting for a while. I am chipping away at him I think but this is where it gets difficult with the boss now because his vomit trail lasts quite a long time as you can see so now we are playing the game of trying to dodge around all of his vomit which is difficult Here he comes. Each pixel's doing kind of seven damage. It's Thirty-two thousand hit points. It's going to take quite a while, isn't it? Oh dear! We got hit by some stray vomit there. Oh, it's one of my little chip bug friends. Look. Right, I'm going to take a tactical death now to reset all the blue pixels. Like I say, we're in the right area for the boss, so we just need to pick up those pixels really. Only a couple of pixels left behind by the boss. Usually, he'd leave quite a bit more. So, oh, there he is. <laughs> that was close. Slight problem there with the um, collision detection, as you can see, it is quite difficult to attack from the um, right hand side. Bit of an oversight on my part that. I feel like we're doing okay at the moment for our progress. His health bar was blocking my movement then. This game, because it is there's so much collision code in this game, it's so important um, and yeah there are still issues with the collision code unfortunately.
So, when the boss is bearing down on us, we don't have a massive amount of time to spend carefully picking up our pixels. We just need to pick them as quick as we can, really. I said that. The boss seems to take quite a while to get over here. Chipping away at him. I probably did give the boss too much health, really, didn't I? Oh well. It's done now. Hmm. Checkpoint down here. I'm not sure if I want a checkpoint down here, but it looks like I've got one. Betty. See this is a thing now, I am stuck, stuck in his stream of tears. Oh, wasn't tough enough to get across that. Now this is a problem with the boss here, what happens is when he dies it kind of moves the boss off screen but the vomit stays so you can end up in a situation where the boss's um, vomit is blocking your um, kind of respawn area, you can, you can kind of get stuck. That's why I did make the boss so slow just to kind of make it, make that less likely to happen. Um, Getting him just to move somewhere off screen when you died, that was just a really kind of like, kind of hacky way of getting things to work basically, because it was made for a game jam, so yeah, there's going to be like hacky ways of doing things quite a lot. Don't really have the time to be able to just spend ages and ages sorting out the movement of just the boss, which again, just to reiterate, it's completely optional. Anyway, we've nearly got him, I believe. <laughs> down to one solitary pixel. Let's try down here again. As you can see, the vomit does fade away after a while, but it does get... It is quite hard to, to dodge still. Oh dear. Trying to thread our way through things. Not sure if I necessarily wanted that checkpoint there. Possibly a bit dangerous. Not too worried though. Like I say, we are fairly close to beating him now. And there we go, we have got the boss. Now I'm not sure if actually... Oh yeah, I did put it in, there we go. His vomit does disappear after a while, don't worry. This is supposed to be a speed run, isn't it? Should probably speed up. So, now it's just a case of going to the exit as quickly as we can. 
So we're going to drop all of these extra pixels that we don't really need. So we move as fast as possible. And we're very close to winning. We've got the mega key, we've unlocked that door, there's the exit, bang. So there you go, that was a world record at Clever Pixel. 36 minutes, 54 seconds, oh dear. Um, that was in hard mode, so that's kind of, we had to pick up 100 pixels, or 99 red pixels. Um, and we also decided to defeat the optional boss. Now just to show you the difference in the difficulties, I'm going to now play it through again, but in easy mode. And I'll probably um, spend a little bit less time, well just wasting time. I'll tell you what, this um, monster energy is very gassy. So compared to um, compared to hard, easy, you only need to collect 39 red pixels. And well, in the next room you see there is another crucial difference. So collect 39 red pixels and there is no requirement to collect the megapixel. This was the room which told us before to collect the megapixel, sorry the megapixel, the mega key. No requirement for that in easy. All we need to do is get 39 pixels and we're done. So that's what we shall do. And as you would probably remember, when I did my um, <laughs> my run through on hard, coming out of that first area, I already had 42 pixels. So if we pick up everything in this opening area, we will have enough to beat the game without doing anything more than the opening area. So easy is quite a bit easier than hard, which is um, probably the way it should be, right? So now we're at top speed, and because it's a speed run, not really interested in getting those um, other upgrades. I mean, there are upgrades we can pick up. See, now you probably realise that that upgrade pixel there is completely accessible if we want to traipse all the way back here with our upgraded pixel armour and want to collect it. Do you know what, that is a pixel that I've never actually collected yet and I made the goddamn game, so there you go. Lots of things that are, have not yet been done in this game, even by me. Now, is there a... yes there is a red pixel here, good. Probably one I don't actually need, I only need 39 pixels. So if I'm leaving the starting area with 42, there's obviously three extra ones that I don't really need. So I don't really need the um, upgrades either, now that we've got top speed, I'm not too worried about doing any fighting, so the upgrades aren't really all that important for us. It's all about moving fast. See, I'm just not bothering with those um, upgrades. This area took quite a bit of um, kind of adjustment and testing when I was making the game. Um, it was probably one of the more I think I tended to make as I added new things into the game, like I added enemies in. I tended to put lots of enemies into the level just after I'd added them in so consequently once I added the chip bugs I had chip bugs everywhere and it made the game a bit too hard. 34 pixels 35 36 have we got enough? I think we have actually 37 
But we are actually going to have to shoot them, I think, aren't we? I was hoping I could dodge them. Let's get rid of those blue pixels. I'm not too worried at this point about any other pixels because I know that there's quite a few. Well, there's 38. Thirty-nine forty. that should be enough. And it is. And there you go. Four minutes, nine seconds. So quite a big difference between that and 100% in the game, even though I didn't really 100% the game, did I? Seeing as I didn't collect absolutely everything. But there you go. So that was Clever Pixel, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm um, not going to do this as like a um, proper Pico Playtime, I'm just going to upload it now. Pico Playtime usually comes out on a Friday, um, or it has been. So yeah, I'm just going to post this now, why not? So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, and yeah, check back later for some more videos on different things to do with Pico 8. I might even play some other people's games, not my own. Right, hope you enjoyed that. And I'll see you later.